untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green Nissa of Shadowed Bows deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 4-mana Planeswalker that starts out at 4 loyalty. She has a passive with Landfall, saying whenever land enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a loyalty counter on Nissa. then we can plus 1 to untap target land we control, and we may have it become a 3-3 elemental creature with haste and menace until end of turn, and it's still a land. Now we don't have to turn it into a creature if we fear some sort of removal spell. And then we can minus 5 to put a creature card with mana value less than or equal to the number of lands we control onto the battlefield from either our hand or graveyard with two plus one plus one counters on it. So Nissa can function as a way to ramp and can also reanimate some big creatures or even cheat them into play from our hand. Although for the most part we want to be bringing them back from the graveyard to get maximum value. So the top end of the deck is all creatures for the most part, so we can uh, use Nissa to good effect. And then we've got plenty of ramp as well to both enable landfall on Nissa to get more loyalty as well as get to a lot of mana to start casting some of these expensive creatures. So we're not really trying to get back 3 or 4 mana creatures, we're more in the 5, 6 and 7 mana category instead. So let's take a look at those creatures, starting out at 1 mana with Lenor Elves for acceleration. Even though it doesn't put an extra land in play, which is more synergistic with Nyssa, it's still a great way to potentially cast some of our 3 and 4 mana ramp spells ahead of schedule. Then at 2 mana there's Lotus Cobra with Landfall producing 1 mana of any color, which is also quite synergistic with the other ramp cards in the deck. Then at 3 mana we've got Fierce Empath, a 1-1 that when it enters lets us search up any creature with mana value 6 or greater, so we've got quite a bit of selection in this deck. We've got Reclamation Sage to blow up artifacts or enchantments, Skewed Swarm also quite synergistic with the other ramp spells, making additional copies of itself if we have 6 or more lands in play. The Spring Bloom Druid helps us ramp by sacrificing a land and then searching up 2 basics, which can potentially trigger landfall twice. We've got Augur of Autumn, which lets us play lands of the top of our deck and potentially creatures as well if we can enable Coven. And Kazandu Mammoth can be played as a tap land or a creature with landfall giving it plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, but for the most part we can treat this as a land with a little bit of upside. Then at 4 mana there's the Connoisseur from Alchemy, a 3-3 with Death Touch, that when it enters makes the opponent discard a card with the greatest mana value among cards in their hand, and we also get to make a Blood Token, which can maybe help us discard an expensive creature to then reanimate. We've got a Lord of Luxury, a 2-3 with Death Touch, that lets us take a look at the top 4 cards of the opponent's library, and then we can exile one of those to potentially cast later in the game, ignoring its color requirements. There's a Ravenous Chupacabra, a 2-2, that can kill a creature when it enters. Oracle of Moldaya also lets us play lands of the top of our library, and we can play an additional land each turn, so it can be a nice source of card advantage. Timeless Witness, a creature that returns target card from our graveyard to our hand when it enters, can also be eternalized for 7 mana, in which case it turns into a 4-4 creature from our graveyard. There is a Solemn to search up a land when it enters, helping us ramp, and when it dies, it lets us draw a card, so nice value creature. Then at 5 mana there's a Westgate Regent, a 4-4 flyer, with a ward making the opponent discard a card if they want to target it, and when it deals combat damage to a player we get to put that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, so if we can return a Westgate Regent from our graveyard with Nyssa, it will enter with 2 counters on it, so then it's a 6-6 that when it hits the opponent turns into a 12-12, so it can very quickly close out the game. We've got Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, which turns all our creatures into lands, so they will also enable landfall when they enter the battlefield, which is quite synergistic with Nyssa as well, and then power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control, which is going to be quite substantial. Elder Gargoroth, just a great creature in general, with a lot of useful abilities. There's Cavalier of Thorns, which helps us ramp and put additional cards into our graveyard, to potentially put more creatures there to reanimate with Nyssa. We've got the Gitrock monster, also very synergistic, and you could easily build a deck around Gitrock monster without having to change too many cards in the deck. We've built some Gitrock monster decks in the past, but a 6-6 with Death Touch, forcing us to sacrifice a land at the beginning of our upkeep, but then we get to play an additional land each turn, and whenever one or more land cards are put into our graveyard from anywhere, we get to draw a card. So very synergistic with fetch lands, some of our ramp cards, like the Spring Bloom Druid for instance, that makes us sacrifice a land to find two more are all very good alongside the Gitrock monster. 
and then getting to play two lanes also good with landfall of course and then Underrealm Lich is actually a great combo with the Gitrock monster if we can ever assemble that. A 4-3 saying if we would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of our library, and then put one of them into our hand and the rest into our graveyard. So we get to put more cards into our graveyard for Nyssa, gives us quite a bit of card selection, and if we ever combine it with a Gitrock monster we can basically draw our entire deck. And then we can also pay for life to make the Lich indestructible until end of turn and tap it. At 6 mana, there's the Burning Rune Demon, a 6-6 flyer, that when it enters makes us search up two cards with different names, and then we get to put one into our graveyard and one into our hand of the opponent's choice, but of course the one in the graveyard we can still potentially reanimate. There's Noxious Gearhulk, a 5-4 with Menace, that when it enters destroys a creature and gains a bunch of life. Massacre Worm can be a sweeper, giving opposing creatures minus 2 minus 2 when it enters, making the opponent lose life in the process. Ancient Green Warden will double our landfall triggers, so also great with our commander, has reach and lets us replay lands from the graveyard as well, so very good with our fetch lands and various sacrifice effects. There's Vorinclex Monstrous Raider, doubling the loyalty and plus one counters on our permanents while halving the opponents. We've got Kogla, the Titan Ape, which can fight an opposing creature when it enters, and when it attacks can destroy artifacts or enchantments, so just a great card in any green brawl deck. We've got Shieldred, Whispering 1, a 6-6 with a Swamp Walk, so it cannot be blocked if the opponent controls a Swamp. And at the beginning of our upkeep, we return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, so it gives us a repeatable reanimation effect. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature, so a must-answer threat. We've got Beanstalk Giant, which can help us ramp early with the adventure, and then later a 7-mana creature with power toughness equal to the number of lands we control. Thorn Mammoth, a 6-6 Trampler, that when it enters, or another creature enters the battlefield under our control, can fight up to one target creature we don't control, so another repeatable removal spell. Hornet Queen, a 2-2 Flying Death Touch, that generates 4-1-1 Insect Tokens with Flying and Death Touch, so great at protecting our Planeswalkers. And then Vorinclax, a Voice of Hunger, a 7-6 Trampler, that whenever we tap a land makes double the amount of mana, and when an opponent taps a land, it will stay tapped for their next turn, so an incredibly impactful card if we can ramp it out early. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, at 1 mana we've got a bit of removal with Blood Chief's Thirst, at 2 mana there's Feed the Swarm which can also deal with enchantments, Heartless Act and Infernal Grasp as instant speed removal, then we've got more ramp with Explore, letting us play an extra land and drawing a card, and into the north to find a snow land to put on the battlefield tapped. And then we've got a bunch of ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone, even though they don't have the best synergy with Nyssa, in the sense that it doesn't help us with a minus 5, it's still useful to ramp out our other cards. And then we also have Mulch and Grizzly Salvage, which can find additional lands while maybe putting creatures in the graveyard for Nyssa in the process. There's the Meathook Massacre as a Sweeper, which plays well with our ramp cards. At 3 mana, Phyrexian Arena can be a nice card draw engine. And then we've got a bunch of ramp cards with Cultivate. And then Grow from the Ashes, Harrow and Roiling Regrowth can potentially provide two landfall triggers as well. At 4 mana there's even more ramp with Migration Path and Vastwood Search, searching up two lanes. And even some of our removal spells can find a land between Binding the Old Gods and Death Sprout. And we've got more removal with Hagra Mauling, which can be played as a tap land, and Languish as a sweeper. At 5 mana we've got another sweeper with Crux of Fate, and then a couple Planeswalkers to round out the deck, with Liliana Death's Majesty, which can make zombie tokens and mill 2 cards with a plus 1, which also fuels Nissa's minus 5. We can minus 3 to reanimate a creature and turn it into a zombie, and then a minus 7, a nice sweeper effect as well. Then Nissa who shakes the world probably doesn't need an introduction, but generates a ton of extra mana while making 3-3 three, three creatures in the process. And Renan 7 can make a large tree folk tokens with reach, and then the plus 1 puts additional cards in the graveyard and helps us find lands, so great synergy with our commander as well. Then our mana base has snow-covered basics, mainly for Into the North, although I did have Spirit of the Elder Guard in the deck for a while too. We've got the castles for utility, the black one for card draw, the green one can help us ramp out a creature a turn sooner. And then we've got Lair of the Hydra as a nice creature land, which plays well with all our ramp cards. And then plenty of fetch lands, which have great synergy in our deck as well, providing two landfall triggers. Field of Ruin can deal with an opposing non-basic, while giving us an extra landfall trigger as well. And then just a ton of mana fixing, Blast Zone, another land that can act as removal as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does.
All right, we're on the draw, facing Riel the Everwise. And my hand does have some early removal, which is good at dealing with Riel. Really need a third land to play Phyrexian Arena, so we can keep hitting our land drops. But I guess I'll try this based on the removal for Riel, so our opponent's deck cannot get too much out of hand. But typically I would want a little bit more ramp in my opening hand. Alright, land is good. Cold Seal Heart resolves. So if they play Riel, I'll probably have to kill it. If not, play Phyrexian Arena. Smoldering Egg they can keep. So could see a counter spell here, but that's fine. Arena resolves. And there's Riel into a Sorcerer class. Okay, so they get an immediate value from Riel. And I do have Feed the Swarm to potentially destroy the enchantments. Although it's an interesting spot, I guess now Languish probably the better answer and hope they don't have like a Spell Pierce. Otherwise, we could have also gone for Feed the Swarm on Riel in case they have a one mana protection spell, and then I can still respond with Infernal Grasp if they wanted to give it Hexproof at instant speed. Cavalier of Gales, pretty good too here. And we can respond with maybe a Cavalier of Thorns. And a Fable Passage seems good. And then I don't have to fetch with Fable Passage yet. I might save it to go with Nissa to provide an extra landfall trigger. Opponent replays Riel. And a Thrill of Possibility I'll lets them draw a bunch. So I could meet Hook Massacre for 5 here, which would be pretty convenient. But we also drew a bunch of spot removal. So it's a close call. If I were to go for Nissa, I get to fetch. And then I can play two spot removal spells. Although I'm kind of liking the Meat Hook Massacre. Can attack for five first. Yeah, let's do that. So I give up the extra landfall trigger. But we get a nice two for one. All right, opponent's actually double blocking. In that case, we can take a different approach. And then just probably Heartless Act the Blue Cavalier. Kill Riel. Their opponent may be expecting another Sweeper. And then I can still play Nissa or maybe the Gitrock monster here. So, what's currently in my graveyard could get back an Ashaya with Nissa. Although I would lose Nissa in the process. Or I can just untap a land here and keep up Infernal Grasp. That seems okay too. And then next turn I can play Gitrock Monster. And uh, if they counter it, I can reanimate it with Nissa still. And then keep the Fable Passage uncracked to synergize with Gitrock. Burgi, I could kill out instant speed here before they make too much mana with it. Oh, a current Temporal Sundering. Yeah, so they were able to cast that before I got a chance to kill Burgi. So their opponent gets to take an extra turn. Do I want them to have Burgi in that extra turn? Probably not. 
So I'll be forced to fetch here. Opponent still gets the extra turn. But only three cards in hand. Every L costs seven mana. So not a very cheap play. Opponent's gonna level up Sorcerer class. Which is not very helpful without any creatures in play. Okay, so how about... I play Cavalier, and then I could also play Gidrock Monster with the untapped land we find with Cavalier, hopefully. Would have been better to have Gidrock in play first to get some more value, but uh, the mana doesn't work out. So, untap lands, no need to turn it into a creature. Play Gidrog, and then I can play an extra land thanks to Gidrog. Send this up to 10 loyalty, can reanimate all sorts of goodies, including a Shieldred, to get back even more stuff. And now the Gidrog is going to start drawing cards. Still have Feed the Swarm as a pretty cheap answer to a leveled up Sorcerer class. The Tormented Prophet can also provide lots of extra cards. And a windfall puts us to 18. They cannot quite cast the Dream Eater here. So it's going to be a key to the archive instead. Alright, so don't hate my spots. Probably no reason to float any mana here before sacrificing a land. Alrighty, Kogla, great two. It's an embarrassment of riches. Nissa probably wants to bring back Shieldreds. And then we get to Smash. Could play Kogla too. Sure. Attack. So, bring back Shieldred seems fine. Be and then I can grow from the ashes, unkicked, get a forest, and still feed this form sorcerer class, just in case. Demonic Tutor, okay. Might get a River's Rebuke here to reset my board. But I still have this enormous mana advantage. Alright, Brawl's Expertise instead to bounce three creatures back. That's acceptable. Okay, so what's next here on the agenda? Could put an Ashaya into play so I get more landfall triggers. And then just play out some creatures, I guess. So Baral's expertise was only a temporary solution. So can they find a way out? Chandra cannot quite wipe my board. You are flammable enough. Brainstorm, that's fine. So unless they've got a time warp here, they seem in trouble. Hope it's not too hot for you. One card in hand. 
And our opponent's just gonna go for Rial. Alrighty. And our opponent packs it in. Shieldra to reanimate another creature. Maybe get back like a Massacre Worm. And that's game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Facing off against a Nethroi, Apex of Death. My hand's acceptable. And I can try and hang on to my Fabled Passage to maybe get extra mana with Cobra. That seems fine. Turn to Cold Steel Hearts. And then I can already play Nissa here. Probably don't want to turn it into a creature. We'll miss out on three damage, but if our opponent does have a sweeper next turn, that would set us back too much. And then now, Fabled Passage can make extra mana with Cobra. And then I can maybe combine Fabled Passage with Gitrog Monster to draw an extra card. Okay, so... I don't even need the crossroads here to be untapped. So this can make black. I get to scry. And an oracle would be a decent draw. So maybe keep that on top. Make black. And then I can untap my land with Nyssa. Play Gitrog. And then I can play an extra land. So I'll sacrifice Fabled Passage, draw with Gitrog, and then we get to shuffle. And get a Swamp. And then I can still play Arcane Signet 2 here. So that was a pretty sweet turn. If they kill Gitrog, we just reanimate it with Nyssa. Acolytes. Keeps filling the graveyard, and opponent's graveyard's kind of scary. Crater Hoof Behemoth, Gilded Goose, which I guess they want to play for ramp. So I'm probably going to have to cast a Languish here to prevent my opponent from uh, mutating Nethroi. Massacre Worm, almost good enough. So I could kick things off with Oracle of Moldaya, and then take it from there. Or I can just languish here to prevent a mutation from taking place. In which case, I probably start by attacking. Put on chumps. Well, now I have the option of just using Blast Zone to clean up Gilded Goose and prevent a mutation as well. And we can do that at instant speed. So let me play Oracle of Moldaya, keeping Blast Zone untapped. No land on top. In which case... Play a land, make mana. And then I could Spring Bloom, draw with Gidrog once again. But then I'm giving up the option of using Blast soon. So I think i uh, just going to untap my land here and use Blast soon, which draws with Gidrog. And then maybe we would have found a land on top with Oracle to still play, which we did not. So I'm starting to miss a few land drops here, which could be awkward, but uh, still have some ramp cards in hand we can make use of. Lucrano is also great synergy with their Nethroi, as it's a zero-powered card they can reanimate. Sacrifice forests. Draw, still no land on top. So I could Death Sprout, Polucronos, 
keep up the pressure and hope to find a line on top after we shuffle. All right, we did. And that gives access to Phyrexian Arena. Still no creature to reanimate. Or I could play Springbloom Druids, which also plays well with the Gidrog. And then maybe there's more lands on top to synergize with Oracle. Ah, Foreign Clax isn't bad either. And then uh, Lair of the Hydra. Perfect. Another land on top. Third deck is operating at full capacity. I guess we can keep going. Make black mana, play Phyrexian Arena. And we've got an 18 loyalty Nissa just waiting to minus 5. I guess I could put in a Vorinclex here. And smash. It's her points at one mere life point. Might have wanted to put Vorinclex in play before getting those extra landfall triggers to get even more loyalty. Probably doesn't matter. Man, our opponent concedes. Awesome. Getting to see the value of the Gitrock monster and Oracle with a few shuffle effects. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Iluna, Apex of Wishes. So having instant speed removal to maybe kill the creature they try and mutate onto is pretty important. So yeah, I'll give this a shot. Bit of ramp with Cold Steel and some more green ramp as well. And then for Xen Arena to keep the cards flowing. Let's see if we're up against the Omniscience combo version, or maybe something a little different. And I'll go with the Cold Steel to guarantee 3 mana next turn. Black for Phyrexian Arena. And hope to pick up another land here. Right, opponent bouncing my Cold Steel Heart. In that case... What do I want to do next? Maybe a Roiling Regrowth. I miss out on the Landfall triggers, but I can maybe kick the Growth from the Ashes instead. And uh, Forest can go. Get Forest Swamp. And I'm not in a hurry to kill the zombie army. Can wait until they get closer to 6 mana. So this turn could play an unkicked Grove from the Ashes plus another 2 mana ramp card. Could explore if I find a land Phyrexian Arena. If not... Cold Steel Heart. That seems fine too. Ah, found a land. In which case, Arena seems fine. Next turn, I can kick Grow from the Ashes into Cold Steel Heart, or maybe keep a Heartless Act if it's necessary. And we can get our. Nissa down at some point as well. So looking at the revealed cards, pretty similar to the Iluna deck we featured recently. So it looks like the Omniscience combo version. Don't have to worry about Iluna mutating just yet. So this turn I'm liking Kicked Growth from the Ashes. And then Cold Steel Heart to give me the most amount of mana. Could also go Nissa into Cold Steel Heart. But this seems fine. Alright. And then if we play Vorinclex before Nissa, we could also. Get double the amount of loyalty. 
opponent foretells what is maybe an Alrun's epiphany. So now we're in the stage of the game where we have to keep up Heartless Act. Alrighty, so a ton of options available. If I go for Vorinclax, I would get to keep up Heartless Act. That can start pressuring them. If I play Nissa, I can fetch, which also lets me minus five and put something in play from my hand. So I kind of like that idea. So let's start there. Can maybe also Scute Swarm plus Expanse. Alright, Nissa gets counterspelled. That resolves. And in that case, I cannot go Scute Swarm, Expanse, keep a Partless Act. So that does kind of limit what I can do here. So I'll just have to pass here. And then I'm not sure yet if I want to sacrifice Expanse or keep it as an extra landfall trigger. Opponent does go for the mutation, which we can stop here, remove three counters, same as killing it. Opponent just gets a 6 6 Luna. And I think I hang on to Expanse. Okay. So next up, I could play my Shieldreds, although if we suspect Alrun's Epiphany, those birds can kind of protect the opponent from the Sacrifice ability. And Iluna is going to be hitting me quite hard, but then again if we let them cast Epiphany, they hit some extra land drops, they could mutate onto the birds, which we want to avoid. So kind of a tricky spot. Could also just start going wide with Scute Swarm, which is always interesting as well. So what if we play a Shia, play Scute Swarm, which then counts as a lands to trigger Landfall, and then fetch, and get some more Landfall triggers. And looks like our opponent has seen enough. Let's take a look at the Exiled cards. Behold the Multiverse instead, fair enough. So no Epiphany, and we were going to be able to take over pretty easily now with our Heavy Hitters. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Niv Mizzet Parun. So not really a matchup where I want access to Bloodsheaf's Thirst early. So while this hand's not terrible. It's also not particularly exciting, a little slow with the ramp, so we'd rather look for something different. Okay, this might be better. Crux of Fate can destroy all dragon creatures, so it could be a one-sided sweeper to deal with Niv, and Thorn Mammoth another answer, and then cultivate one of the better three mana ramp cards. So ideally we find another 2 mana ramp card here, if not, just want to keep hitting our land drops and hopefully resolve our spells. Alright, Mind Stone's nice. So next turn I could go for Oracle. Depends if we suspect a counter spell. So given our opponent's keeping up a bunch of mana, what do I want to get countered is a question. Oracle also gets killed by burn spells. Could even go with Nissa as a distraction, but better to play Nissa if we can play a land afterwards. So I don't actually hate the idea of playing Oracle. And then if it gets countered next turn, I could play Nissa, play a land, maybe get back Oracle. We got immediate value. Could potentially play two lands off the top, but one land is pretty good for now. Alrighty, so have a few options. Don't mind shuffling my deck with either Cultivate or Empath to potentially get more Oracle value. And I think Cultivate makes more sense in this stage of the game. 
before playing any lanes. And then probably want to play the Snarl while we still have a basic in hand. Okay, Skewed Swarm on top. So do I want to draw Skewed Swarm? It's not a bad card, but I imagine our opponent's going to be packing a few sweepers. So I also don't feel bad shuffling it away. So I can play Empath, shuffle again, maybe still find a land on top with Oracle. Alright, Empath gets countered. And it's probably still fine to play the land, even though I could keep them to go with Nissa, which we'll probably play next turn. And then I guess Cute Swarm is a nice pickup as well. Tolerance is kind of a must answer card. So I could play Thorn Mammoth, which is likely to uh, deal with Tolerant. And uh, yeah, next turn we've got Crux of Fate for Niv. Or we can just play another creature with Thorn Mammoth in play. And looks like Thorn Mammoth prompts a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Nickel Bolas, God Pharaoh. A matchup where Infernal Grasp is particularly bad since our opponent's not going to have too many creatures, presumably. I do like Arcane Signet into maybe a Binding to destroy opposing ramp artifacts. And then there's a Liliana to potentially ramp into. So this hand is okay, not amazing. I can expect to have one creature removal spell in most opening hands that's going to be dead. So... As a six card hand, if we ignore Infernal Grasp, is this good enough? Probably. Would maybe be better on the draw compared to on the play, because then we have maybe a better target for binding. Because our opponent's not guaranteed to have like a two mana ramp artifact we want to kill. Feed this for him. Can also tag enchantments at least, but also not what we wanted to see. So I'm probably just gonna go for Nissa here. Right, Thought sees probably takes Liliana. Alright, goes for the binding instead. Rampage makes me sack Nissa instead. That works. Massacre Worm, another card that's not particularly effective in the matchup. Shieldroot could be fun, and we could reanimate it with our Liliana. So, is that the plan here? I think so. And then I might as well animate my lair for three. And hope Shieldred survives. Jace can bounce Shieldreds. It's an effective answer. I'm a step ahead. I am who I but Lair can finish off Jace at least. So we'll plus. Is more and then I guess I could also just play Nissa, and then the land from Nissa can finish off Jace. Yeah, creature lands. And Planeswalkers are good against control decks like this. But we're points close to playing God Pharaoh, which is not the easiest to answer.
key to the archive, opponents down to one card in hand, which is probably going to be whatever the key finds. And we want to be in a position to pressure Nicol Bolas. Expanse is nice with Nissa, so that can put something into play. And could even be a Timeless Witness, get something back from the graveyard. And there's Liliana we can minus as well, so a ton of options. Could also go with Scoot Swarm, try and go wide. Or I can just use Nissa to put in Shieldred from my hand. And then Liliana can get back Witness, which can get back maybe Binding for Key or just Phyrexian Arena for card draw. And probably fine to smash with Lair for one. And then I might hang on to Expanse to enable Landfall on Scoot Swarm. So there's Nicol Bolas. Doesn't have enough damage to kill Shieldred, so has to plus two instead. Finds Vastwood Surge, that's okay. And now we're in an excellent position to either pressure Nicol Bolas or just kill my opponent. They have one card in hand. Ooh, a D-Spark is what they found of key. Fair enough. Even Exile's Shieldred, so perfect answer. So now do I want to fetch so I can lair pressure Bolas? I think so. So I can also animate another land. Liliana probably starts by plussing. Now our opponent can still replay Nicol Bolas pretty easily. So also have the option of Migration Path. Gets two lands. I can play Hagra Mauling as a tap land. So I can minus five my Nissa once again. But there's nothing amazing to put in play. So I think I'm better off animating Lair for x equals 5. And then we can still plus on a land. The land is savage and, and take out Bolas. And this goes face as opposed to going face with everyone to get our opponent low, which is also a valid strategy. And then we can play Hagar Mauling tapped. Don't expect to need it for creature removal when we have two other answers in hand. So our opponent just replays Bolas. Pluses. Finding Burning Rune Demon. That's pretty good. Could find multiple sweepers. Now our opponent only has 4 mana. If they had 5 mana, this would be a lot more devastating, because then they could maybe get Hour of Devastation to kill all my creatures and planeswalkers, as well as maybe a Time Warp to take an extra turn. But they're limited to 4 mana, so they might get some uh, cheaper sweepers to deal with my board instead. But that should still be manageable. Our opponent found Languish and Crux of Fate, so maybe they didn't have Anger of the Gods available as a cheaper sweeper they can cast. So we'll put Languish in the graveyard, let them keep Crux of Fate. There's no dragons in play, so Crux of Fate would also blow up their own demon, but they can't even cast it here with only four mana. Okay, can we present Lethal? Feels like I should be able to with Vorinclex. Play a land, get double loyalty on Nissa, which can minus putting in something like Massacre Worm. And then now feed this worm 
Makes the opponent lose two life. And we can attack. GG's. We defeated the evil Nicol Bolas after featuring it a few days ago. So yeah, pretty pleased with how this Nissa of Shadow Bows deck came together. Doesn't necessarily need Nissa to win games, but it still has good synergy. We've got some nice creatures to bring back with it or put in play from our hand, which is actually a mode I've used more with Nissa than I expected to. So it just goes to show the versatility of the deck. But as we mentioned in the introduction, could swap out your commander with maybe the Gitrock monster, make a few adjustments, and that's another fun deck to take for a spin, even with Field of the Dead now being banned. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.